within the race from memory. But the field in a moment set to be released. <laughs> Fifteen second board just shown to the drivers. So Ryan Wong and their nearest to us, Henry Lee, about to be released onto this warming up lap. One last chance to have a look at the gear circuit. And this time, of course, it is a much drier and a much faster gear circuit for the TCR Asia Challenge to do that one. So field sprints away from the line. One of two cars at the back that were a bit slow and sluggish away, but I think they've all got going now. James Tang's Honda was one that was not quite so keen on its toes. Now, let's hope they don't get overexcited now they've got a dry track to uh, compete on. They were on wet tyres this morning. It was uh, wet pretty much all around the circuit, wasn't it, for their first race of today. Dry tyres all the way through the field now. A fully dry circuit sunshine and uh, as they weave the cars from side to side they are doing their best on this formation lap to get as much heat into the tyres as they possibly can for this nine lap race with Ryan Wong at the front of the field they're turning into now this bow the right hander that uh, offers us so much excitement so much opportunity for overtaking saw earlier on in the GT4 race, so much opportunity for near misses. If you haven't seen that moment, which involved the car of Adam Christodoulou, uh, recommend you watch back on the live screen and find the start of the GT4 race, because that was completely and utterly unique. It was, yes, I think the, the CAD Grand Prix website offers a, a race playback it does, as yeah. well, so you can go and find that race in isolation if you so desire. Or on Facebook, the live stream on Facebook as well, you can do the same with that. So options are plenty as the uh, cars then wriggle their way downhill. So this one is the race, I mean, I know this doesn't narrow it down, but it's the one with the real drama, because with the reverse grid or semi-reverse grid of the top ten qualifiers, there are people that need to be on their toes. Uh, in a sense, you want to try and get as many places as you can before Lisboa on the first lap, because after that it becomes difficult for the rest of the lap to make progress, but it's not impossible. No, it certainly is not, as uh, they head their way around through the tight and twisty section of the gear circuit to the left hand of uh, Donna Maria, long left hand, it's tight on the exit of the corner mm. to Donna Maria. Oh, they're not there yet. Just coming through police and then Moorish. I looked up and saw a left-hander and assumed it was Donna Maria. It was not. It's the left hand of their heading down to now. That's the one. And through they go. Tight on the exit, as we saw a little bit earlier on today. That's the run down towards the Melko hairpin. Single file, always. Yes, and tight on exit there as well. Really tight on exit for our pole sitter, Ryan Wong, getting it uh, pretty close to the barrier on the exit. And now the circuit opens up, gets wider, gets faster, gives them the opportunity to weave the cars and get that last little bit of heat into the tyres. The good news is that on this formation lap, they are all uh, pretty close to each other. Yeah. So the field is nice and tight, isn't it? Which is good news. So to be a standing start, of course, unlike before when it was the safety car start. So this time it's a, a bow drive circuit. And like the F4 drivers who are yet to come, they get the uh, two different track conditions over the course of the day. So uh, towards the timing line they will come one by one staggered grid just to give a little bit of space between cars for safety reasons even though the pit straight is relatively wide it does separate them out and just uh, help should there be any dramas so the cars round the final corner of the gear circuit line up on their grid spots and we'll get the second race of the day underway in due course for nine laps for the TCR Asia Challenge, all part of this celebration of motorsport, this festival of motorsport here at Macau for the 70th Macau Grand Prix. First line, front row is in order, so to the second, so to the third, 
the fourth row comes into line. The rest of the field take their places. We are shortly to get this nine lap race underway. Last couple of cars into place then at the very back. And as the field awaits then now, the five second board will be shown once that final car is in place, which it is now. And so with one or two non-starters for this second TCR Asia Challenge, the top 10 on the grid in reverse from their qualifying order are going to be the ones to watch. What promises to be a great race is about to get underway. Light to go out, really good start by Henry Lee, really bad start by Cheung Cheon, number 55, as around him darts. Uh, Lee Carhey, who was really good in race one. Now, what about Sean Tong? Because he made a decent enough start. He's on his toes. So also, of course, is Lo Se Ho as they come then out of Reservoir for the first time. Henry Lee Jr. leading the way. Then lights are flashing. In second place is Lee Carho. And then in third, Ryan Wong. So he's been a really slow start, Ryan Wong. Behind him in fourth place is Kelvin Wong. And out of Mandarin, they come for the first time as it is game on for the race lead. And Lo Se Ho has already cleared one or two from life on the grid. Yeah, a really good start by Henry Lee. And they're going to go side by side for the lead. And absolutely on the limit is Lee Carhey as they go on the run down towards Lisboa. Through Lisboa they go. A little bit of a moment there for fourth place as the leaders are already around San Francisco. And more drama at Lisboa in the background, but that touch for fourth was Ryan Wong being given the hurry up by Sean Tong. Now, the fact that Sean Tong's already ahead of Lo Se Ho and up into, what, fifth place with Lo Se Ho sixth, that's impressive. Uh, very impressive indeed. Needs a good race here. He's going to try and squeeze through on this really tight section, but the top two have broken away, haven't they? This is a very determined uh, Lee Car Hay. Uh, on the opening lap and right on the tail of the very fast starting Henry Lee. The two of them together, tied together through this tight section. You can't really get two cars through this part of the circuit, but it has been done. And in a touring car, it can be done. It can if you race with respect to the guy you're racing with, then you are uh, both able to accept the space for the other car. Uh, of course, some drivers are better at that than others. But right now, Henry Lee Jr. doing a very good job indeed. Didn't really shine in the first race of the day, did he, with an early pit stop when it was that mixed weather conditions of, of damp and drying. But behind him is a man who got a drive through penalty in race one, Lee Carhay. And he's hanging on to the back in second spot as they make the climb to Donna Maria now. And on that part of the circuit, Henry Lee Jr. just getting away a little bit. But it's really fourth and fifth and sixth that we need to be looking to see if it's Wong from Tong. It isn't because Sean Tong has gone through. He's taken Lo Se Ho with him and we've lost Ryan Wong. So somewhere there, the pole car has gone AWOL. Has he dropped back into sixth or is it worse than that? There is the yellow Audi, but that's a big amount of time lost. Yeah, huge amount of time. It is a trio for the lead. It might be a quartet before too long because Sean Tong has really got the hurry up on yep. this opening that and needed to do that. That was exactly what he needed to do in the first part of this race. And the leaders come round and are about to predict. So it's going to be six cars for the lead, isn't it, before too long as they all three, top three, turn through the right-hander and up towards the start-finish line. Top two has broken away once again, haven't they? Yeah, and Lee Carhey on the lights trying to distract Henry Lee as they come into Reservoir. Does that work? Well, not yet, it doesn't. It's, it's more in hope than in anticipation, I think. Henry Lee then having to give a toe now to uh, Lee Carhey, who looks on the inside, coming down to Mandarin, and that gives him the race lead. And in fact, Henry Lee even put the indicator on there, saying, go through, you're quicker. Okay, There's no does, point me fighting it. It does work, then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> uh, Sean Tong is about to make his move for third place. Here comes the blue-nosed Honda up on the inside line there as they break hard on the brakes. He's up the inside of Hugh Hank, and he clears Henry Lee as well. Super. So Sean Tong goes second, and Lo Se Ho is stuck in fifth. Absolutely superb, wasn't it? Two cars on the run down to Lisboa. Sean Tong really does have the bit between yeah. his teeth for this race and is uh, giving us a great demonstration of how to be decisive and clean on the opening part of a race. He made a mistake early on in race one when he was in the lead. He then made contact with the back marker and got a puncture. So uh, this is his chance to put it all right. And Lo Se Ho, who is there on the inside, makes a move oh, against oh, oh. Yu Heng. That's audacious. And it has worked and as it well. Works. Goodness me, that was very brave indeed. I did say this is not the part of the circuit that you get overtaking, but in a touring car, you can. Absolutely. But again, you've got to be respectful. And Hugh Hang was, he thought, well, this guy's quicker. He won the first race. He gave him the room. So Sean Tong now is on a mission to get onto terms with a similar Honda of uh, car, sorry, the uh, Audi, I should say, of uh, Lee Carhey. 
But where is Lo Seho? He is still fourth, so he's got to get past Henry Lee yet. So he's losing touch for the moment with Tong, isn't he? Yep, and uh, just turning through the right-handers, the two right-handers, one comes very quickly after another at Police and Moorish, and then onto the left-hander of Donna Maria. So um, what an opening lap this, opening couple of laps this has been for Sean Tong. He's put in the fastest sector of the race in sector two on this lap. And on sectors one and three, and four as well, I beg your pardon, for Sean Tong. Lee Carhay uh, put in the quickest uh, overall second sector. The three fastest sectors for the flying Sean Tong. And he's bringing down the gap and ever bringing down the gap between himself and the race leader, Lee Carhay. So the top two in a couple of moments are going to be tied together. What's the gap going to be when they cross the line and complete two laps? The gap is going to be 0.9 of a second and now we're on the run down towards Mandarin and therefore also Liz Boa. This was the last time that Sean Tong was absolutely superb. Took two places on the previous lap. What are they going to do now? Well, he's going to pitch for the lead and Lo Se Ho is going to have to pitch for third place but he's stuck behind Henry Lee and you can see how much time he's losing. So he needs Sean Tong not to make his move yet uh, and get trapped there, but he wants to get past Henry Lee. And at the moment, the race one winning Hyundai just does not have the pace, but equally Sean Tong not close enough there to dive bomb Lee Carhey. So no change for the leader, no change for third either. Lo Se Ho struggling a bit here. Uh, the battle is on though, isn't it? Because Lo Se Ho on the tail of Henry Lee as they go through San Francisco, they go up through the hill and Lo Se Ho was very, very brave on this section of the circuit on the previous lap to make up a place early on on this tight and twisty part of the Macau circuit. Uh, meanwhile, Sean Tong has closed up, hasn't he, on the race leader. They go around the left-hander at Teddy Ip and uh, Sean Tong on the back of uh, Lee, Kai, Lee Kai Hai and uh, the top two tied together on this, the third lap of a nine-lap race. Top two on their own now. Yeah, they are. Sean Tong, fastest man on the circuit then. He's closing that gap down all the time. Took another two tenths out of the Ooh. second sector. Took three tenths out of the first sector. And it's almost now borrowed time, isn't it, for Lee Carhey because he knows that Sean Tong is coming and he's coming fast behind him. So before long, the battle is going to be on. Audi versus Honda. And Lo Se Ho, in the meantime, is still trying to find a way past Henry Lee and see what he can do about getting up with the leaders. This, in a sense, ought to be working for Lo Se Ho with Tom being trapped behind Lee, but he's not there with them yet. Not able to be as yet. And another story has emerged that Paul Poon is having a much better race, multiple okay. winner here at Macau. He's put in an overall best in the first sector. He's up to sixth place. So at long last this weekend, Paul Poon is having a good race to look back on. He is indeed after crashing and qualifying and therefore missing out on his participation in Q2. Sean Tong was almost at the back of uh, Lee Carhey as they got to the Melko Hef in that time, as you saw. Right, but the Audi is fending off the Honda. So as they come up now towards the completion of the lap, look to see Henry Lee, who is still ahead of Lo Si Ho. Now, yesterday, the pace of that Hyundai, you'd have thought it was just glided through the field without any problems. Henry Lee Jr. may have let Sean Tong go by earlier on and may have let Lee Carhey go by when he knew they were quicker, but he's not letting Lo Se Ho go, is he? He's, he's putting up a defence there. Is he friends with Sean? I don't know about that, but it's... Uh, I mean, it was really Lee Carhey that he let through first of all, it wasn't was, it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's right, and yeah. Sean Tong went, went by as well. But it, it, now Henry Lee thinks, OK, I'm going to race for third. It's working in Sean's favour at yeah, the moment, it's, isn't yeah. it? That's for sure, because uh, now the top two go on the run down towards Liz Boa. What can Sean Tong do this time? Nothing, because he's just a little bit too far back. He went on the wide line, the wide entry. He's doing the same at San Francisco. No way through there. So it's still Lee Carhey that leads from Sean Tong, but Sean Tong is is driving very determined to take the lead while um, we have Lo Si Hay still being held in fourth place by Henry Lee. So they're on the tight and twisty section now. Lee Car Hay, he leads Sean Tong in second place. Then we've got the gap before we've got Henry Lee and Lo Si Ho in fourth place. We we'll talk too much about fifth and sixth. That's Hugh Heng in the number 95 car. And Paul Poon in the uh, number 21 car. That completes the top six. Back with the race leaders now. And Lee Carhay 
is doing a pretty incredible job not putting a wheel wrong with the amount of pressure he's under from Sean Tong right there behind him. Yeah, I go along with that. And Sean Tong trying to work out where he can make that move. It's not going to be here. So the cars now make that run up the hill then from uh, police towards Moorish. And on the hill, the climb now to Donna Maria. So you've got Audi versus Honda. It is Lee Car Hay ahead of Sean Tong. And Lo Seho has done an absolute best on this lap. So does that suggest that the Hyundai is finally got ahead, ahead of Henry Lee? Because if there's clear track space, you can anticipate those absolute bests would be coming. Look in the background, and the answer is. No, he's not. It's still Henry Lee in third place. And Lo Seho tried to get up the inside there because Henry Lee went deep into the Melko hairpin. So that's becoming a real problem for the Hyundai driver. He just can't make progress now. Uh, no, and uh, of course the Melko hairpin is... Uh, so this is uh, an interesting point. The Melko hairpin is an area of the circuit that you cannot overtake over the course of the weekend. So it makes things even more tricky when you get to there and the car in front has a bit of a problem. It's uh, a tricky section of the circuit, but it certainly does set you up for the run down now where we are for the race leaders and that's across the line and on the run down towards Mandarin and uh, the all-important Lisboa that opportunity to overtake so across the line goes the battle for third and fourth place and meanwhile we're back with the race leader what can Sean Tong do this time as they go through Mandarin now this is the all-important run I'm not sure he's close enough this no. time he might be really, really good on the brakes. He might even get a bit of a tow here coming down to Lisboa. But Lee Carhey positions the car in the middle of the road, so there's no real chance for Sean Tong to go on either side. He tries to force a mistake, but he still can't do it. Uh, the top eight point scorers across the two races, rather than the top eight finishers in race two, go forward into the World Tour, the gear race next week. Initially, the idea was that it would be the top eight finishers, but then a change to the regulations uh, overnight, effectively, has meant that points are going to be awarded in a, a miniature championship across the two races, and it's the top eight scorers that go into next week's activity which is um, a really quite wonderful uh, prize for doing well over the course yeah. of the, the first weekend of the Macau Grand Prix this weekend, because to be taking part in the gear race is something very special indeed. When you look at some of the names of the winners here in the past and the championships that have been decided here at Macau, that was an incredible move, wasn't it? James Tang in the blue and white Honda up the inside of Ryan Wong and forced him out wide. and. The pair of them ended up being split there as well as another of the rapid Audis was able to nip up the inside. Right, for the race lead, there's still nose to tail. And of course, Sean Tong now hoping that he will have done enough out of limping to the end of race one uh, in order to do anything to get through. Because if he doesn't get into that top eight scorers, one way of making sure he's in the top eight is to win this race. Certainly he is, and he's doing his level best to do exactly that all over the back of the race leader. Lee Carhey as they make their way up towards the Melko hairpin now. This is critical. He's right on the tail of him. A good exit from the corner, which he gets, um, sets him up very nicely for the run down through Black Sand. Speed increases. The track widens. The speed continues to um, increase as they go down towards Fisherman's. And are then the final turn of the corner after they go through Fisherman's. Through Fisherman's they go. This is the run down towards Arben. The final turn on the gear circuit. And then critically setting up for the run down towards this borough through Mandarin, the ever quicker Mandarin. So this is the end of the lap. This is the conclusion of lap number five now. It's a nine lap race and with a good exit from the Melko hairpin, it can set you up for a really good first part of the uh, circuit, which is the quick part of the track. Now we've had a change for third place and Lo Si Ho, who has now done the fastest lap of the race, is up into third place. He's finally cleared Henry Lee Jr. Now Sean Tong uh, still concerned, may not qualify for next week. Uh, but he's about to go for the race lead and down to Lisboa. He's got the inside line and he's got the job done, assuming he can slow up the car in time for the corner, which he does. And he turns in and now Sean Tong takes the race lead. He was a little bit of a way back, like half a second as they came across the line, but he got a good run, a good toe all the way down to Lisboa. Sean Tong leads race two in TCR Asia Challenge. And when you said Lo Si Ho went into third place, he did so. He did so in fine style as well with the fastest slap of the race, a 2.34.2 for Lo Si Ho, now in third place and now in the lead of the race is Sean Tong. What's he going to do about uh, shaking off Lee Carhey as they head around the left-hander at Teddy Ip? 
on the tight and twisty section of the circuit. So that was a really good manoeuvre for Sean Tonk in the lead, wasn't it? It was indeed. And a, a good, clean pass. No silliness. We've had uh, another change further back as Paul Poon managed to get up the inside of Hugh Hang, who got it all wrong under braking and drove himself into the barrier. That was a very unusual off. That was an unusual off and uh, really played into the hands of Lo Si Ho. Now in third place with the fastest lap of the race as well. This the battle for the lead. Sean Tong is doing his best to extend the gap between himself and second place. And in fairness, he's got a bigger gap than he had uh, between himself and Lee Car Hay when Lee Car Hay was in the lead of the race. So he's doing a good job here, is Sean Tong, determined to be on the grid for the gear race next weekend. So didn't finish race one, but he's on target for a win, which I think is 50 points for race two. And then behind him, it is uh, Lee Car Lay, but you've got chasing on in third place, Lo Se Ho. And they come down again towards our band. So Sean Tong to Honda. What a gap. Absolutely. So many years you associate Sean Tong with Audi. Safety cars being deployed. That's going to bunch them all up. And that throws Lo Se Ho a bit of a lifeline. We've got, it'll be three laps to go at the end of this, won't it, when they come across the line. So this is going to have to be a quick safety car period to ensure that we go racing again the other side of it. As there is Lo Se Ho coming towards the timing line. Well, even have gone by, safety car conditions will now be uh, instigated. So, a drama with the safety car deployed because they all bunch up together. Exactly what Lo Si Ho wanted yeah. in this race. This has very much played into the hands of the third place car. And as far as the qualification for the gear race, it would be a tremendous disappointment, wouldn't it, if a race winner uh, wasn't able to get through to the gear race because Sean Todd has done absolutely everything in his power to win this race, gained maximum points, has driven incredibly well, and now with the safety car deployed, we have three laps remaining. See, now Sean Tong has gone into the lead. A an overall best in the first sector, two personal bests in the second and fourth sector as well. And this has been an impressive race for Sean Tong. Right, safety car's picked them all up. Now we need to try and work out why we've got the safety car, who it is that's gone missing. Uh, I wonder whether it might be Henry Lee, I'm waiting for cars to come across the line, but the timing screen is not offering any instant clues, but... All will be revealed in a moment. Yellow flag at turn three, and then the safety car. Well, turn three is Lisboa, and that's Hugh Hang up the escape road. Is that it? Is that the only reason for the safety car? I think it must be. And I wonder, looking at those tire marks, whether that was caused with a, a wheel dragging because he hit the wall. You said he, it was unusual, yeah, didn't you? Or he hit the wall because yes. something broke and pitched him left. Yeah. But either way, he can't turn the car around and rejoin. And I suspect the reason we have the safety car is to get that out of harm's way, because if anybody else goes out the escape road, they're going to hit it, potentially. It's, it's not an escape road, no. it's, a, it's a danger road, yeah, so it quite. needs to be cleared. And bad news is that it's not quick by the look of it to do that. No, so trolley jacks in place, little dollies um, need to go underneath the corners of the car to get it moving, so it may take the um, marshals, the recovery teams, a little while to get that car clear. As we say, we're on lap seven, it's a nine lap race, and it is being led by Sean Tong, who is driving in such a determined style, he's gonna need to carry that on as well. He's got Lee Car Hay just behind him, who he has already demoted to second place with a great move down at Lisboa. Here's the incident for Hugh Heng again, 95. Now have a look. He comes towards the braking zone now, and as he brakes, the car puts him towards the wall. It's like something grabbed, and having hit yeah. the wall, maybe there's a further breakage. But it is. It's strange that under, under heavy braking, the car should just suddenly swing left. No, it just changed direction. Something, something went horribly wrong on the car to cause that to happen and uh, maybe a little extra bit of damage caused to the car as well. So that's the reason for the safety car. Well, actually the safety car is not going to uh, go into pit lane at the end of this lap, is it? 
car's being told once again by race control to close up the gaps to get a little bit closer to one another. You can see why. Big, big gap there. And we had drivers penalised with a, a drive-through penalty uh, in the first race for the same offence. So Sean Tong leads the way in terms of winning this. He's in the box seat. In terms of getting into the gear race next weekend, he can do no more really than just win this race. A puncture retiring him from the earlier race today. The safety car's lights are still on, so it's going to come through with two laps to go. It could end up as just being a one-lap shootout, couldn't it? I think it probably will. We've got uh, now, uh, what are we seeing here? Another reason for an incident. Uh, that's the number six Hyundai's tip of is. Uh, Lee Wen Yi. So that car trying to get going as well. I so think that's may, stranded. Maybe not the isolated incident then down at uh, no. the front. And if that's the police, there should be a crane to get that out of the way. And that's perhaps not as easy to swing a touring car out of harm's way than it is a, a single-seater, but the provision is there. Right, so two laps to run in race two of TCR Asia Challenge. I was just thinking to myself quietly, how well has it been going earlier on? It's been going supremely well. Yeah. <laughs> and lap <laughs> after lap of excitement. Exactly right. Well, Sean Tong will be happy, I suppose, that he was in the lead, at least, when the safety car came out. Geronimo Balaraco just going through shot there on the back of Deng Bao Wei. And the lead is now coming towards the Lisboa right and uh, once again. Feeling as though the pace is quickening at the moment, which might suggest a restart's coming. Um, we need that. We need that at the end of this lap because they are on lap eight out of nine. So for the safety car to peel off into pit lane at the end of this lap would give us some racing to Indeed. see the checkered flag and the brilliant prize that awaits some of the drivers to compete in the gear race next weekend on the weekend of the Macau Grand Prix here for the 70th running of the Macau Grand Prix. Also celebrating the return of Formula 3 cars from the Macau Grand Prix on the 40th anniversary weekend since Formula 3 cars became the machinery to compete at Macau. So the safety car brings them around and the lights are still on. We've not yet had any notification that it will be in this time, but it might be in that third safety car sector that we get the uh, notification at the moment the uh, cars are still within sector four on the lap so, uh, the timing sector that is and uh, towards police it's always incredibly narrow section of that barrier that juts out almost arms embrace waiting to catch you moorish and then Father maria don't get the safety car in this time, the race is going to finish behind it, isn't it? It is, I'm afraid, yeah, and we've still had no indication on the timing screen that the safety car will come in, and I think we can assume that that's the problem down at uh, Police rather than the problem down at uh, Lisboa, which potentially could extend this safety car period. Although they are speeding up, I think. Uh, well, yeah, that's what I said at oh, the start of the lap, and it will be in this time, yeah, so that's encouraging then. So it is in that last timing sector where the decision comes to switch off the lights. So it is going to be a, a, a chance for Lee Kahe to fight back. Lo Seho in third place, still hunting for a, a, a win in the second race. He had a win in race one earlier on in the day, but there's always that feeling that race two is more important, even though they're of equal weight here. But as they come up towards the timing line, Lee Kahe could not be closer to Sean Tong this time around, could he? As we go green, then one lap to decide the winner of TCR Challenge. Asia race two. Look at Losey Ho as well. He in turn is tied to the back of Lee Car Hayes car as they come down and they get the green flag to change position on the run down toward this is going to be very exciting down at this borough, isn't it? Through it Mandarin is. they go. It is still Sean Tong who leads. It's Lee Car Hay in second place and now coming under uh, the attention of Paul Poon. Oh, goodness me. Big off in the background, and Ryan Wong is involved in it as well. Red flag straight away, race stopped because we've got four cars involved. All of that started, I'm afraid, with number 35 getting it wrong. Uh, Lam Car Chun, he was hit by Ryan Wong, and then others got involved as well. So the race is stopped, and this is going to take a while to clear, as you can see. It was number 35, Lam Car Chun, that lost it hit the barrier, spun across the road, Ryan Wong, just like last year when he hit Lo Se Ho, had nowhere yes. to go, same yeah. part of the circuit, yeah. uh, and then others got involved as well. So I'm afraid it's four cars in the end. Race suspension, 
but I can't see it being restarted on the last lap. So Certainly not, no. I would imagine that's going to be it. But that, oh. That's half your accident. Ran Wong's going to give up on this place at this rate. Two uh, accidents year on year, same part of the circuit. Just look at the damage it does. It's only really when you see the accident that you realize that the speed that they were traveling at, there's debris all over the road. Ran Wong gets out of the car. He's okay, which is the good news. Uh, 35, Lam Car Chun yet to get out of the car. It Tap Men goes through the incident zone and scoops bits of debris with him. Uh, the race won't be resumed, though. All the cars are being sent to Park Ferme. Medical car on scene. Oh, dear. It's uh, not a good sight when you see it's such a quick part of the circuit, isn't it? Yeah. So here it is again. So Lamp Car Chuck, he just loses it. Pure and simple. Can't slow the car down. Hits the barrier. Comes across the road. And Ryan Wong thinks, I'm going to go that way. But he ends up sort of hitting the brakes and spinning and being hit. And then the car that's hit him, look, comes across the road and gets collected as well. So look, Ran one confronted with that car. Oh, I think it might have been hit from behind anyway, actually. Big, big impact. And then it's number six of Li Wangji that uh, collected the third car involved, which I'm trying to identify. So after the restart, of course, the tyres get a bit cooler as well, don't they? So yeah. you can't quite take these corners in the same way that you would in the heat of the race. True, but that's one of the reasons that that safety car was speeding up. Speeding up. Let yeah. them do that, to give them at least a sporting chance. Yeah. But yeah. The, it's the, the third car involved is the one I'm still trying to work out. It might have been Chen Qion's Cupra. But anyway, in a sense, it's academic because the race ain't going to be restarted. And Sean Tong, Lee Ka Hei and Lo Se Ho will be in the top three. Yeah, they certainly will. And Sean Tong could be very pleased about that. We could only pick out one thing to be pleased about in race one. I think we can pick out everything to be pleased about for Sean Tong. He had a great opening lap, making up the places early on. And uh, then the constant um, attention to the back of Lee Ka Hei's car to finally take the lead of the race into pit lane, onto Park Fairway they go. Lo Si Ho will be disappointed that uh, he didn't get the opportunity to have the final laps. I'm not sure it's going to make much difference. I mean, if you look at the order that they've come into the pit lane, Paul Poon had got ahead of him. So actually, oh, yes, he did. He'll, yes. Be, he'll be pleased he did. that he's going to have been given third place on the count back. But that Hyundai just never seemed to have the pace today, uh, sorry, in race two, that it did earlier on. No, in, re in race one, yeah. Just, just yeah. didn't look there. No, you're right. Yeah, Paul Poon got through, of course, didn't he? The multiple winner here at Macau. And so much happens, I forget things. <laughs> Do forgive me. <laughs> it's easily done because there's so much drama and often it involves the same people. So you think, oh, was it qualified or free practice? <laughs> yes, so, I so know, yeah. Best bit. Yeah. Right, Sean Tong, here rides the scrutineering checks. Uh, Lee Ka Hei behind, and then Lo Se Ho, the race one winner for third place. There, look, in the uh, Hyundai Elantra N TCR. Fourth will be Paul Poon, fifth will be Yan Chang in the Lincoln Co. And sixth, Henry Lee Jr., who, of course, raced well early on. So Paul Poon did get the results that uh, he wanted in race two. It has not been the perfect weekend for Paul Poon thus far. It's uh, certainly making up for it with a podium posi position across the line for Paul Poon. is a reasonable way to finish the weekend. Now, in terms of points, yes. Sean Tong might be OK here because out of race one, uh, Yan Chuang, who was second, ending up fifth. Third was Chan Wen Tong, who didn't finish. Getting a replay of the incident here, look. So Lam Kao Chun across the road. Ran Wong sees it all coming and thinks, which way do I go? But he's already been hit. Yes, he was hit up the back by uh, Chen Chion, and that turned him into the incident. Chen Chion, in turn, hits the barrier, comes across the road, and then he gets hit there by uh, Ling Wang Ji. That's a huge amount of damage to the car of Lam Ka Chun. And on impact, and again, it just illustrates the speed they gave. The car sort of like they explode as the bodywork flies, doesn't it? Four big hits. Not a good scene uh, to look down upon. The other thing that I noticed, actually, when you saw the initial impact onto the barrier, you would expect a, a slight amount of flex in the mm. barrier, not a bit. Mm. And that's a big, big impact. And the barriers here at Macau do do what they're meant to do. Absolutely. Which is to Absolutely. keep everybody outside of the racetrack safe. That's a race winner. And Sean Tong out of the car, immediately um, 
pulled out of the car and indicated to go to be weighed. So he gets the points for the win. The drivers from race one, third Chang Wen Tong didn't finish this, fourth Hugh Heng didn't finish this, uh, sixth Chen Qion in race one, and he will be given 11th, uh, and Lam Ka Chun will be given 8th from that race on the count back. So he might have done enough with that victory and the mixed results of others to go through, is what I'm saying, into the gear race next week. Lo Se Ho is content by the look of it, even though that car never seemed to come alive. Sean Tong's delighted, though. Do you think Lo Se Ho was taking things easy? Because I don't think I don't I'm not sure. I just no. don't think the car looked quick enough. He, he no. couldn't get through the traffic early on. Got stuck behind Henry Lee. He's not the sort of driver to just sit there. Lee Car Hay did a good job. A Second really place. good job. Mm. Yeah. And uh, leading the race, fending off the attentions of a very, very quick and determined Sean Tong. And happy scenes outside Park Fair, mate. Was that an arm around the shoulders to say he's um, so happy needed a bit of uh, <laughs> arm around the shoulder. They're all happy for him, aren't yeah. they? And he's uh, been so briskly dead to the podium, he hasn't even taken his crash helmet no, off yet. That's true. Happy scenes down there on yeah. the um, journey to the podium. Confirmation of the result. Declared at seven laps. They were on lap eight, but it goes back to the last completed lap. So Sean Tong, the winner, uh, Lee Ka Hei second, and uh, Lo Se Ho in third. Paul Poon was fourth from Yan Chuang and Henry Lee Jr. Then Wang Quang, uh, James Tang was eighth. Ninth was Ram Wong, despite being involved in the uh, incidents. And uh, then in tenth place, it was Chen Chion. Chen Wen Tong next from Deng Bao Wei, Geronimo Badaracho and Tian Kai. Un King Wen was 15th. Kao Chiap Hong 16th and Ip Tat Meng in 17th place. Provisional result, that is. So, as you look at one side of the Macau Grand Prix building, on the other, there is the podium, and there it is, which is now going to get busy because the doors open, the trophy girls step forward, and TCR Asia Challenge Race 2 podium is next, and that will be getting underway any moment as the drivers are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 70th Macau Grand Prix TCR Asia Challenge Race 2 Trophy Presentation Ceremony. First of all, let's welcome the top three finishes to the podium. The second runner-up is number one, Lo Si Ho from Hong Kong, China. The first runner-up, number 27, Lee Ka He from Hong Kong, China. And the winner is number 10, To Wei Fong from Hong Kong, China. Congratulations to the top three winners. And now I would like to invite our guests to present the laurel and trophy to the winners. Let's welcome Ms. Christy Chung, Vice President, Events and Promotions of Melco Resorts and Entertainment Limited, to present the laurel and trophy to the second runner up, Lo Si Ho. Congratulations and thank you, Ms. Chung. Now I would like to invite Ms. Raymond Lowe, Senior Vice President, Property General Manager of Altura Macau and Mocha Clubs, Melco Resorts and Entertainment Limited, to present a laurel and trophy to our first runner-up, Lee Ka He. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Last but not the least, let's welcome Mr. Paul Wang Kun, President of the Sports Bureau and Coordinator of the Macau Grand Prix Organising Committee, to present a laurel and trophy to the winner, Cho Wei Fong. Congratulations. I would like to invite all the guests, please move to the centre. And our winners, please go to the top of the podium. Raise a trophy and take the photo together. A loud cheers to our winners! Congratulations! Thank you, thank you very much, our guests. Thank you. Thank you, congratulations, and thank you, our great girls. With all the driver, please remain as we have the champagne shower time. Thank you, our great girls. And here, 
comes the taste of the victory. Let's share this glory moment with our top three winners of the TCR Asia Challenge Race 2. A large yes. Congratulations! We still have one more to pop. Always the best moment to anticipate for. Here is the taste of victory, the glory moment of our winners. Let's do it. Congratulations! Thank you! Once again, congratulations to the top three winners of the TCR Asia Challenge Race 2. Thank you very much. Thank you.